So now we're going to be enhancing our books class using fields from Pydantic. Fields allows us to um, add extra validation for these class variables here. That kind of helps us in checking the data that's coming in as an input. So one of the flaws that we have right now in this project is um, we have all of these as is, right? Um, but what I'm going to show you now is going back to this application here. Um, and here, if I create book, what's going to happen is, let's say I click try it out and I have, um, let's say author as, as a blank string and I'm going to submit that. And as you can see, we have this title, uh, we have author as a blank string. Um, which is not really a string because string uh, needs to have some sort of a text. It's an empty string. And then if we go back to read all books here, click execute. And you can see that book here that we just created. So we have the title as string. Uh, we have author as no string. I mean, if you have a book, it needs to have an author, right? So this does not make any sense. So what I'm going to do here is instead of this guy here, I'm going to add some sort of validation here. So when you input a book, it needs to have an author. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use fields from Pydantic. I'm going to import that first. And after that, I'm going to specify field in here in the variable. So how, how to do that? I actually use an equal sign field and I'm going to say, and as you can see, there are a lot of um, options here. We have um, you can have a title, you can have uh, max digits, min items, max items, which takes an integer value, uh, you have unique items. What I'm going to choose from here is the minimum length, okay? So I don't have an empty string coming in. So minimum length, I'm going to enforce minimum length equals, let's say, two character, or let's say one character, okay? So what's going to happen now is that we need to have a minimum length of one uh, for the author field or, or for the author variable here. So let's save this here. Let's go back to our uh, Swagger UI here. Let's refresh this. And now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a book. Let's try it out. And let's say title is XYZ. Uh, string is, let's, let's uh, put an empty string for now. Let's do test it out. Or, the the change that we just made execute and it should throw us an error so that validation here and as you can see we have this error here now right 422 error unprocessable entity um, and what's going on with this error message ensure this value has at least one character why one character because we specified that one character here right minimum length equals one so yeah so that's why it's saying that value error any string dot min length so let's correct that now Let's enter, uh, let's enter something here. Um, I'm gonna refresh this again. And for now, let's do try it out. And let's enter title as XYZ, author as Elgomedica. And let's execute that. It should work now because now we have a minimum length, right? It's more than minimum length, which is however many characters we have. And as you can see, the response code of 200, that means a success. Uh, let's go back here, read all books, try it out, click execute. And you can see that book that we just added, right? Title XYZ, Author Algomatica. Perfect. So one more thing I'm going to show you, show you here now is um, how can you add some more fields here, okay? So let's say I'm going to add one field here. Um, let's say... A field with minimum length of one um, and maximum length of um, let's say 50 next length equals 50 and we can adjust them here to make it look good and I'm also gonna add one more thing here let's say it's called title and I'm gonna show you what that is real quick but this will be a description of the book, okay? And let's align them so they kind of look good. Uh, looks good. 
looks good it's all aligned now looks pretty good why i'm doing this alignment is because it just makes it look more readable right the code looks pretty good when it's aligned save this here and what's going on here so we are st we are stating that hey description field should have a minimum length of one and maximum length of 50. so let's go back here refresh our page as always um, create a book let's create a book here um, try it out and author let's leave all that as as is description let's enter this as an empty string again again it should throw us an error yes because it requires a minimum length of one maximum length of 50 right ensure this value has at least one character so let's make that change now let's say uh, some random gibberish here execute that that should work fine as long as the length of that string is less than 50 and greater than one it should work it worked let's check it out uh, try it out and read all books it should have that weird book there yep so it all worked right but what if i want to make this description field optional right right now it's all required here but i want to make this field optional so what i can do here is i can i can add i can i can actually like import one more thing here let's say from typing import optional right save that and i'm gonna make this field optional so to make it optional you're gonna wrap that string with optional okay so optional then square brackets string now save this and let's go back to this page and it should be let's create one more book here and let's click try it out and let's completely remove this description here right and let's execute that because since that was optional the field description was optional and i removed that field and i created my book here let's see what happens here code 200 i removed that field completely um and because of that the description is not null right um everything else looks fine let's go go back here read all books that book should be there now with no description right successful response and there you have it after executing that you can see that book here now description is null everything else was the same and so yeah so that's pretty much it as far as adding all these kind of functionalities is concerned using fields um you can add extra validation for your class variables right one more thing i'm going to show you here is you might be wondering I added all these kind of extra validation things, right? But how can I check in a Swagger documentation here? So we have this title equals description of the book, minimum length equals one, maximum length equals 50. But how do I know when I'm looking at this documentation here that, hey, all of that stuff is required, that you need to have minimum length of one and all that, right? How do I know, how do I know all that? What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna show you this, this section is schemas. So in schemas, you have book, you have validation, HTTP validation error, you have validation error, right? so what is this book here so this book here is the class from this and this will contain all the things that we just covered so it will contain that hey the id should be id should be of type string and it's required with this red star here that means it's required our title is required and the title should be of str type string uh, author is also required it should be of uh type string and minimum length of one why minimum length of one because we specified that in our code right description you, you see there's no red star here that means it's optional the description of the book so, so type string minimum length of one maximum length of 50 and title should be a description of the book right so this title here is actually is actually this guy here title so you can always check what you have um um, as far as extra validation and all those things are concerned in the schema section here So the schema section will give you all the information that your class has right or it needs when you create an input So that's the schema for the class is concerned if you have an error It will give you schema for the error if you validation error. It will give you schema of that. So So that's it as far as uh, creating and adding these extra validation functionalities in your classes are concerned uh, as you can see Fast API gives you a nice um, way of reducing a developmental time, a software developmental time, because 
Now, all these extra validation are kind of like built in into your fast API, thanks to Swagger and also a huge thanks to Pydantic.